Chris Richter here again. Welcome back to ricochet.com.au. We're going to look at another in the series of H5P. And this is the H5P drag and drop. So let's jump straight in and have a look and see what this actually looks like. I'm going to the h5p.org website. There's an example there for drag and drop or a few examples and I'll show you a couple of them. A drag and drop activity is obviously exactly that. You drag an object and you drop it somewhere. So the the components of dragging and dropping are the area or the drop zone of where you're dropping something, the object that you're actually dragging, and then choosing whether it is the right drop zone or the wrong drop zone, or whether you can have multiple drop zones for the same object. So for example, let's look at this one. We have uh, all these different objects, and then we have our draggable objects down the bottom. If we do know the answers, we can just move them around till we put them in the right place. If we're not sure of some of them, we might get some of them wrong when we drop them in, like so. When we select down the bottom, we go to check. It will then tell us whether we got them right or wrong, which ones are correct. The total score and a retry as an option to retry. Now, one thing I did notice there was that this one here in the top left jumps to a certain position when you place it on there, whereas this one doesn't. So there is an option to decide whether you force it to jump to a certain spot on the object, or whether you just let it sit wherever. It sort of guesses whether it's in the right vicinity to be correct. So the next one we're going to look at is a chessboard. Now the importance with this one is, uh, the, the typical question they're probably asking is, drag the chessboard pieces to their correct position for when you're starting to play chess. So it's teaching you what is right and what is wrong. Now if I place this piece here, it won't let it stay there because this isn't one of the options, whereas this is correct. Notice these are the same objects, they can be loaded in multiple times and they can sit in the same, in certain spots. Uh, they're acceptable to drag and drop in multiple spots. Whereas if I grab this one here and place it there, it won't let me put that in, but if I put it over in the corner or in the opposite corner, notice it's only that corner that I can put it in, otherwise it drags or drops it back to where it started. So this is forcing you to, to learn where the correct places are by only giving you the correct options. So that's a, a couple of examples of drag and drop and what it looks like. So let's jump back to our Moodle website. I'm going to select more, I'm on the home page. Going to select more and go to content bank. And in the content bank, we're going to select add and then find our drag and drop activity. There it is, drag and drop. And we're going to call this drag and drop experiment M E N T S. First of all, a drag and drop activity generally has a background image. And the background image sets the scene for the locations or areas that you actually want to drag and drop the images into. It's You don't have to use an image but it is useful or can be useful. I'm not going to use an image. I'm going to leave it as without because that can be your experiment. But I'm going to show you how to just do drag and drop in terms of having an object and having somewhere for that object to drop. Let's go to our task, which is step two. And we need to add drop zones and we need to add text or images as the actual draggable items. Let's add a drop zone first of all. So I click on drop zone and I'm just going to call it drop zone one. And I'll tick show the label just so it's easy for you to see. And then we have the, the two important options that you can jump between depending on what you need. This drop zone can only contain one element, which we will choose because we only want one to be chosen or one droppable object to land on it. And then we'll enable auto align. I'll show you what that looks like when you go to use it. There is our drop zone, drop zone number one. And we'll just put that up here. All right, we're going to copy and paste and paste again and paste again. So we've got four drop zones. We're going to edit each one. This will be drop zone number two. Leave all the settings the same. Drop zone number three. Is done. And drop zone number four. And yes, I did double click on that to edit as well. So I've got our four drop zones. And then we've got our first lot of text. We'll call this text one. The drop zones that we can drop this onto are actually all, because we want it that they can drop it onto all, but they may not be correct. So this is the areas that they're allowed to drop them onto. So I'll select done. And I'm just gonna resize that. 
So it's roughly the same size. Yep. There we go. We can actually set the exact size by choosing the size as 100 by 40 or uh, make it fit, but I'm just going to leave it at that one. We're going to copy that, paste that in, and paste again, and paste again. So there's our four options. Let's edit each one. So text number two, we'll go done. Text number three, we'll go done. And text number four. So we've now got our four. And notice I use copy and paste because I didn't want to have to reset all those settings every time. So we've got text one that will drop under all of those areas. Text two will drop under all three and text four. But we don't know which ones are correct and which are incorrect. Now we do want to make it so the drop zone one and text one are the correct match. So let's double click and you can see now on the drop zone we have the correct element, which one's correct. So if I choose text one, that's correct for the first drop zone. This one is text number two. This one is text number three. This one is text number four. And that's all we have to do to set that. So let's just save and have a look and see what it looks like. So we've got drop zone one, two, three, and four. Now I can drop this text onto any of those. Now notice when I drop it there, it moves it over to the left automatically. So if I drop it in the middle, if I drop it in the middle, it will move it to the left. And that's that auto position where it positions it or shifts it so that it sits in the right spot. Otherwise it could actually just leave it sitting out here. Let's have a look. Let's say we get one of them correct at least. And we go check. There we go. Drop zone four and text four are correct. The rest are all wrong. So let's retry and do it all correct. One, two, three, four. Check and they are all correct. So one thing we do want to fix is that width because we want that to match so it actually looks presentable and we'll just check on one other setting as well so let's go to edit go into our tasks go into our drop zone and have a look at the size so it was 140 wide by 40 so we get each one of these and we just make them 140 by 40 because we need to fix those sizes and we can move them down move them around to where we want 140 by 40, and obviously 140 by 40. That way they fit nice and evenly. There we go, that'll sit much better in there. And the other part that we um, we had there was that this drop zone can only contain one element. I'm gonna leave it at that, but it, it does allow you, if you have uh, maybe one one big drop zone, that you want to have, they can drop five things into that drop zone and five things in the other drop zone. Then you can have more than one element that sits in there and then you just choose that there is more than one correct location. So it's quite simple to use. And that's all we needed to look at our drop and drag experiment. If we just check that now, it should fit nice and evenly with our objects when we drop them. There we go, now they fit nearly perfectly. And yes, we didn't get them right, did we? We only got those two. Hopefully that's been useful to you. My name is Chris Richter. If there's uh, anything you need with H5P or Moodle, let me know. Always can to help out. Uh, put some comments below. And if there's any other H5Ps you'd like me to look at, let me know. I do have a couple more to go, I think, but uh, I certainly won't get through all of them because there is so many. Don't forget to check out the courses down in the description.